The Dream Chaser space plane has been in development for nearly two decades, a process that has proved to be exceptionally challenging. Developing a spacecraft is among the most difficult tasks in the world, and the extended timelines often involved can make it seem like some projects will never come to reality. The Dream Chaser has been one of these projects, facing numerous challenges that have delayed its progress and led to doubts about its eventual completion. However, recent developments have provided a renewed sense of hope, and we might finally see its first flight soon. In this video, we will talk about these exciting developments. Before we delve deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about the latest advancements. Dream Chaser is very different from other spacecrafts we know. Unlike most modern spacecraft that rely on parachutes and ocean landings for recovery, Dream Chaser is engineered to land on conventional runways. This runway landing method, which was last used regularly during the Space Shuttle program, enables quicker recovery and reuse of the spacecraft. This capability not only simplifies the logistics of returning from space, but also reduces the time and cost associated with the refurbishment for subsequent missions. By landing on a runway, Dream Chaser can be quickly refurbished and relaunched, much like an airplane, which is a game changer. Dream Chaser's design, which includes wings and landing gear similar to those of an aircraft, is a nod to the legacy of the space shuttle. However, it incorporates modern technological advancements that improve efficiency and safety. The spacecraft is compact and capable of docking with the International Space Station. The Dream Chaser project started in the early 2000s, aiming for an initial flight in 2016. However, several challenges emerged that led to delays. Early in its development, the Dream Chaser faced significant issues with its automated flight control systems, crucial for ensuring safe runway landings. Debugging and refining these systems proved more time-consuming than initially expected. Further complications occurred with the need for design modifications, particularly in the thermal protection system. These necessary changes required additional development and testing phases, extending the timeline further. Originally, the Dream Chaser was slated to launch on an Atlas V rocket. However, as Sierra Space looked towards more cost-effective launch options, they decided to switch to using the Vulcan Centaur rocket. After all the challenges and delays, the Dream Chaser is now nearing its first flight, which is scheduled for the first half of 2024. The spacecraft recently completed an important pre-flight testing at NASA's Neil Armstrong Test Facility in Ohio, which included vibration testing and environment simulation. Once these tests are completed, tenacity will be transported to the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. There, it will undergo final preparations for its first launch. The launch schedule is dependent on several factors, including obtaining the necessary re-entry license from the FAA. The importance of Tenacity's first mission extends beyond its own launch. It also signifies the return of runway landings for spacecraft. This is crucial for time-sensitive research and experiments. As I said earlier, the spacecraft will be launched aboard a United Launch Alliance's Vulcan Centaur rocket, after liftoff, the rocket will ascend until it reaches the upper atmosphere, where the payload fairing will separate. Once in orbit, the Vulcan Centaur's upper stage will deploy the Dream Chaser into a precise trajectory towards the International Space Station. Some people might think that the success of Sierra Space's Dream Chaser could challenge SpaceX's dominance with its Dragon and Falcon family of rockets. However, the two spacecraft serve somewhat different functions rather than directly compete with each other. SpaceX's Falcon rockets and Dragon are renowned for their reusability, which significantly reduces the cost of access to space. The Falcon rockets are capable of carrying out a wide variety of missions, including launching satellites, resupplying the International Space Station, and sending crews into orbit. The Dragon spacecraft has proven successful for delivering supplies to the International Space Station and safely returning cargo to Earth with the capability to be refurbished and reused. On the other hand, Dream Chaser offers unique capabilities, particularly with its runway landings that are gentler on sensitive payloads. Dream Chaser's design also allows it to be launched on a variety of rockets, giving it flexibility in launch options. 
Its ability to land on conventional runways enables quick payload returns directly to planned sites, which could be a significant advantage for rapid payload processing. Instead of the Falcon family rockets or the Dream Chaser spacecrafts, I think the Starship will change everything in the industry once it becomes operational. Starship stands out not only for its full reusability, but also for its massive payload capacity and scale. It aims to support a payload capacity exceeding 100 metric tons to Earth orbit, dwarfing the Falcon Heavy's capacity, which is around 64 metric tons to low Earth orbit. In terms of power, Starship's Super Heavy booster is equipped with 33 Raptor engines, generating a thrust capable of lifting significant payloads and large numbers of passengers into space. This power far exceeds that of the Falcon Heavy, which is powered by 27 Merlin engines on its first stage. In addition, Starship has an impressive height of approximately 120 meters, making it the largest rocket ever constructed and about twice the height of the Falcon Heavy. This size allows Starship to have large internal volumes suited for long-duration missions to destinations like Mars. One of the most striking capabilities of Starship is its potential to carry up to 100 people on missions to Mars. Moreover, Starship is designed to support a wide range of missions, from satellite deployment to interplanetary missions and potentially commercial space travel and space tourism. One of the innovative features of Starship is its ability to be refueled in orbit. This capability is crucial for enabling long-duration missions to distant destinations like Mars. In-space refueling will allow Starship to carry enough resources for the journey back to Earth or further into the solar system. SpaceX is intensively testing prototypes of the Starship at their Boca Chica, Texas facility. They have already conducted three orbital test flights of its Starship rocket and is actively preparing for the next one. The first orbital test flight took place on April 20, 2023, and ended in the destruction of the vehicle just minutes after liftoff, failing to reach orbit. This was due to multiple issues, including some engines not performing as expected, which led to significant damage to the launch pad itself. The second test flight occurred on November 18, 2023. This flight aimed to demonstrate improvements in new systems, such as a hot stage separation, where Starship's engines ignite while still attached to the booster. The mission reached a near-orbital trajectory and completed a controlled re-entry over the ocean. Despite not reaching full orbit, this test marked a progression from the first, with the booster performing its tasks more successfully, but ultimately being destroyed during the boost back burn due to a propellant filter blockage. The third test flight, conducted on March 14, 2024, finally achieved orbit, a significant milestone for the program. However, SpaceX lost contact with the Starship during its re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, suggesting that the vehicle likely broke apart or burned up. The Super Heavy booster used in this test was also lost during its return to Earth. The fourth test flight of SpaceX's Starship is targeted for May 2024. This upcoming flight is set to showcase several enhancements and changes from the previous tests. Notably, the flight aims to include improved procedures and technologies that build on the experiences and data gathered from the earlier missions. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.